Christian apologist, I oftentimes make arguments for God's existence by pointing out the design of the universe and the design of biological systems. Yet the response sometimes is a negative response. People will wonder, if what you're saying is true, then why are so many scientists resistant to the idea of intelligent design? I'm joined today by Dr. Matt Carlson, a biochemist, a high school physics teacher, and a Christian to answer that question. Uh, Matt, why do you think, uh, if design is so evident in the universe and in biological systems, that many people in the scientific community are resistant to that idea? I think they may not be as resistant to it as sort of just don't really care, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you don't believe there's a creator, if you don't believe there's an intelligence um, behind the creation of the universe, you're not looking for it. You know, it's like you're driving down the road again and you see a license plate. Oh my goodness, that license plate is from Montana. What are the odds? Well. Okay, I just saw the license plate. It, it, it's playing with the odds in your head. If you assume there's not uh, an intelligence behind it, and you, you assume there's not a God, basically, you're not looking for an explanation for one, and everything, it's here because we're here. And that's, uh, it's hard to argue against that, because they just assume there isn't anything more than the universe, all right? Uh, I go back to the idea of beauty, right? If the universe is beautiful, doesn't that imply something beautiful uh, involved with it, something more overarching. Like, say, why does the universe have to be elegant? You know, you can really get scientists there because the best theories are the most elegant ones. You know, well, why does that have to be the case? You know, and so, so having a, a Christian worldview lets me view God's creation as we study it. Uh, and I think trying to point someone to God through the coincidences of our universe, even though they're really, really low odds, is not going to steer their thought process uh, towards, towards God, towards thoughts of, of, of why are we here, how do we get here kind of thing. Well, you know, it, it's interesting to me because if you look at Romans uh, 1, it, it talks about the idea that God is revealed through the record of nature, and that revelation is so plain mm -hmm. that people are without an excuse. But Paul goes on to point out that the tendency of people is to worship the creation as opposed to the creator. Do you see scientists doing that, worshiping the creation it, it, as a response to the, the design that they see as opposed to directing that worship towards the, the mind that brought the universe into existence? I, to be truthful, I see the scientists worshiping themselves. But, you know, okay. But then getting on beyond that, uh, and, you know, scientists are fine. I'm going to get one of them all, you know, phoning me saying, ah, but, but people have a tendency to get caught up in themselves. But, yeah, and then they, they do sort of worship the creation that, that the elegance and the fact that they can understand the universe and, and they think that's awesome. Um, you know, people go off on tangents and, like, they see the beauty of nature and, again, they worship the beauty itself rather than where did it come from. Uh, so there, there is definitely a danger of that, of, of getting involved in seeing the universe and how cool it is and having that cloud your vision of like where, where did the universe come from? What created that? Where did it come from? Well, you know, what, something that's interesting to me that, that, that you mentioned is scientists become really absorbed with the fact that they can understand the world around them and they feel very proud about the fact that they're capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. It almost is as if there is an addictive nature to science that keeps people from seeing beyond nature itself. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think scientists hate to not know things. They don't want to admit they don't know things. And so if you're pursuing faith, um, that's venturing into some unknown stuff. And so it's far easier for a scientist to just like, I'm not going to think about that. You know, let's focus on things that I know, focus on things I think I can know, and, and, and they, unless they have some part of their life that involves uh, a creator, involves a spiritual component, they're going to just kind of squish that out of the way so they don't have to sleep, rest, uh, you know, not sleep at night kind of thing. 